One of the most depressing parts about my day is whenever I see a video, a viral video of something particularly violent out of the city of New York, I have to wait because I know, nine times out of ten, under the current bail reform regime, what we're going to find out is that the person behind this crime could have easily been held in jail based on their other charges and clear and obvious evidence against them, but of course the bail reform law prevents that, and whenever bail reform doesn't seem to cover it, we end up in a situation where a district attorney like Alvin Bragg is not pursuing a prosecution, or if we end up in a situation where the district attorney does want to charge, we we then have to deal with left-wing judges that are very prominent in boroughs like the Bronx releasing somebody or aiding in their release, which ultimately led up to the crime. And what we're going to talk about today is this viral video out of a Harlem smoke shop where we see somebody not only shoot somebody point blank when they're not even expecting to be shot, but then we see him double tap that person and rob him. And you will not be surprised that this is not this person's first murder. He actually killed somebody earlier that day, a 19 year old. And on top of that, we have a previous criminal history that should have kept him behind bars, but that didn't happen, so now two people are dead, and we have all these different people asking questions, some of them blaming the smoke shop because, you know, they had to open their business shortly after this, and that seems to be the problem, but in reality, we need to lay the blame at the feet of people who ignored obvious signs of danger. But before we get into that, I just want to say thank you to my members over at actualjusticewarrior.com slash join. Join, get access to the secret video page, early access to the videos, and support the channel. And Anna Kasparian participated in my collaboration. Oh, give me the money. Give you, give me the money. Okay. So thank you so much to Anna. Surveillance video shows the fatal encounter Sunday. Two men are talking inside a smoke shop on Malcolm X Boulevard when the man on the left pulls out a gun. We're freezing the video just before he shoots the 36 year old victim point blank. Now I know a lot of people will point out that anytime you're on a boulevard or a street that is named after a civil rights figure, somehow in some way something bad is going down. And yes, that does hold true in this situation. But I want to take note of what the local news just showed us and I thank them for cutting the video before we saw the grisly end of this man because what you can see is obviously an argument but this person is not even looking at him when he pulls out the gun and shoots him and for whatever reason this local news report didn't go into the fact that not only did he shoot him point blank in the head right there but after everybody fled the store including the shooter the shooter actually stepped back in and fired again while he was on the ground just to make sure that that he was dead. They have the man who did the shooting, a deadly shooting inside a Harlem smoke shop. The alleged gunman was wanted for another murder that happened just hours earlier. As CBS 2's Ali Bauman reports, sources tell us the suspect was out on bail for another crime when the shootings happened. And while they vaguely reference the charges that this person actually faced, when you hear them, you're going to be as angry as I am, if not more so, if you also happen to be a resident of the city or of the state of New York because it's absolutely absurd. You should not be out. There's video of that crime too. And trust me, it's closely related. Tuesday, police arrested 21-year-old Messiah Nantwi. Police sources tell us investigators believe he also shot and killed a 19-year-old gang rival in Harlem earlier that same day. And to make matters worse, Nantwi was out on bail at the time for attempted murder charges. Yeah, that's right. We're talking about a suspect who is a gang member. He killed a person earlier that day, so the police were looking for him already and his original crime what he was arrested for what he was out on bail for was actually attempted murder and if you think it can't get any worse if you think it can't get any more obvious that this person should not have been on the street and obviously I'm going to tell you how the system cut him a break because of course he's in the privileged class in the United States of America and this is what criminal justice reform is actually about it's not about low level drug offenses it's about catering to violent criminals like this person that shooting is also on video and that video is body cam video Come on, man. 
This is police body camera video from that encounter two years ago when prosecutors allege Nantui shot at an NYPD sergeant and two officers who tried to stop him from spraying graffiti on a building in the South Bronx. The officers were not injured. Yes, not only was this person out on bail on attempted murder charges, not only was that attempted murder committed with a firearm, not only was that captured on video, but it was on body cam video. The police own footage shows this person who they arrested firing off shots against a sergeant and two different officers. You couldn't have a better case of pretrial evidence against somebody for the charges that they were facing. And by the way, if you're missing out or you're not counting correctly at home, that should be three counts of attempted murder to hold somebody in jail. But guess what? They didn't do that, even though bail reform actually supports you holding somebody in jail under attempted murder charges. So this is one of those cases where the statewide reform wasn't the thing holding it back. And since it happened in the Bronx and not in Manhattan, in reality, the prosecution was actually trying to hold this person. But of course, the system fell apart at the judge level, just like another case that we talked about because of utter insanity in our system. So why was the suspect out on the streets after being indicted on attempted murder charges of police officers? Well, the Bronx District Attorney's Office told us that the judge in that case set the bail at half a million dollars and then later reduced it to $300,000 despite the DA's objection. The defendant only has to pay 10% of that $30,000, which he was able to do. Now, the local news report is reasonably accurate, and I do credit them for getting the body cam footage because they're one of the few local news reports that actually had that integrated into their segment, but this is one case where they're just a little bit off on their facts because what actually happened was this person was arrested and charged with those counts of attempted murder and initially held without bail. You know, it makes perfect sense. This guy's a gang member. This guy's carrying an illegal firearm. He's firing that gun at police officers who are just trying to stop him from doing graffiti, so obviously not somebody who's sensible at all. He fired at three different officers we have it on footage so this would be a perfect case of somebody who has shown themselves to be a clear and obvious danger and thus should be held without bond but then we have a judge and the judge decided you know what that's not fair. This guy needs a second chance. I don't know if you know this, but the real reason why he fired that gun at all those officers was because of the systemic systems and the systemic structures. And in reality, he was doing graffiti just to feed his family because as we all know, the guy's basically an Aladdin. So we're not going to do that. We're going to hold him on $500,000 bond because, you know, it's quite a serious scenario. But then, like it was said in the local news segment, they reduced it to 300000 because 500000 was too expensive and since you only have to throw down 10% that's $50,000 so he wanted him to get out so his family only had to put up 30 and now he was free and out on the streets to commit various other crimes while awaiting trial for again three counts of attempted murder with a firearm caught on video of police officers body cam footage can't be any more obvious of a case where this guy's 100% guilty and of course he committed the crime again except he was more successful and do you had any doubts about this man's intent need I remind you that he came back in after already shooting somebody point blank in the head and double tapped him while he was on the ground I don't know what they took into consideration but this guy should have been in jail sitting for his uh you know trial look i'm gonna link the article that gives you a more in-depth breakdown of the criminal history of the suspect in this instance but needless to say it's extensive we have gang affiliations and this guy was so familiar to the police officers that ended up working the scene that when they saw the surveillance video alone they were able to identify the suspect that they were looking for so that's how familiar he was to law enforcement which makes a lot of sense when you have somebody who tried to murder three cops before and of course was just dumped out on the streets by a Bronx judge who thought oh my god what a poor victim poor baby all he was trying to do was graffiti in the middle of the night in order to feed his family how dare we hold him in jail but this while ridiculous and while unforgivable and insane and cost the lives of two individuals that did not need to die had the system actually worked in the way that it was supposed to is bad enough. John Jay College of Criminal Justice Professor Michael Alcazar says while jail sentences for attempted murder of an officer can be about 10 years, he's not surprised this case is still awaiting trial two years after the shooting. I think it's just a backlog of work and sadly that's what they're taking into consideration 
over the safety of New York City citizens. So uh, it's failing. The system's failing. The professor has it right in that moment. And to be clear, I've been very skeptical of anybody, specifically people who have attended John Jay College of Criminal Justice for their educational background before starting this YouTube channel and their opinions related on the topic, but he nailed it. The care and concern is far more for the perpetrator rather than the victims. And yes, we have a backlog of cases in our system. We should be trying to speed up these trials. This is the perfect case to bring to trial immediately considering it's on video, body cam video, and it's the most open and shut case that you can possibly have. This guy should have already started his 10-year bid on that attempted murder charge of an officer, yet he was out on the street and now the attempts were successful and two people are dead. And chances are it's not even going to stop there. Chances are we're going to find out about more criminality from this person that could have been prevented in this window where he clearly and obviously should have been held behind bars awaiting trial. Again, when you have attempted murders on video, I don't know what else you're looking for in order to detain somebody awaiting the judicial proceedings. It's the most obvious case. It's all alleged because he hasn't been convicted yet, but this is about as close to you did it as it could possibly be. Then returns and shoots the victim again. No one should have to die inside of a store in front of people. What happened here is not only devastating to community leader Aisha Sekou, who runs Street Corner Resources. It adds to the concern about violence happening in and around smoke shops. This does not ensure the public safety when clearly all they did was take the rug and roll it up and push it to the front. That's the rug that the young man bled out on. So I wanted to highlight this person who claims to be a community leader for a very specific reason. Because it seems like politicians, community leaders, and all these different people want to blame everybody for any problem in society except for the criminals. And by the way, the left-wing judicial reforms that were instituted that allowed this perpetrator to be out on the street in the first place. This woman has decided that the smoke shop is actually the person behind this the smoke shop is actually the real problem and the violence surrounding the smoke shop say cool once it's shut down the owner was back in business today the people who run the business care nothing about the people in the community other than to create um a way for a dollar to be made. Now, to be 100% clear, there are certain businesses that tend to have crimes that happen around them or in them more often than other types of business. And the solution to this would be to have data-driven policing like the NYPD is quite famous for. They have a system called Comstat where they send increased patrols to these problematic areas or problematic businesses in order to deter some of those criminal actions. But this woman legitimately is blaming the business she wants the business shut down there was no mention throughout the course of this segment from this community leader about punishing the criminal or going after the judge that lowered the bond specifically so the criminal could be out after he fired shots at three different officers the business is at fault because the business doesn't care hard enough about the community let me make something a hundred percent clear to this woman and anybody who thinks that the business has equal or even any any kind of shared responsibility with this criminality. The people within this community don't care about the community. When you have violent criminals from within the community and people within the government that enable them, all you have to do is not support those people, roll back these ridiculous reforms that have obviously backfired. We're not talking about not arresting people for possession of marijuana, and that would actually address the issues as laid out right here. The idea that the smoke shop has crime that happens to it is a consequence of its location in that area. In fact, the idea of heightened crime around these smoke shops is also due to the fact that these type of areas don't really have any other kinds of businesses. So this is one of the few things that would actually open up there because the clientele is of such a character that they would be patrons of this place. It's all about the community and not about the business. The business serves that community and the community doesn't care that a murder just went down in that smoke shop and that's the second shooting within a certain period of time because not only is the business open, but there are people patronizing it. So don't tell me that they don't care about anything but profit and that's somehow evil while they're running a business. You're a community leader. Why don't you explain to me 
why people in the community are lining up to buy their products a day after somebody was executed as if that's a normal state of affairs. If the community is so strong and the community needs to rally together against this business, why are there more people standing inside the store than standing out there with you? There is not sufficient outrage and that outrage isn't directed at the right people. These kind of activists are just anti-capitalists. They want to go after a business for any reason. The homicide is just an excuse, and one of the reasons why you know that is because that's the second homicide that that person committed that day, if you remember, and I don't see her trying to rally the community to go shut down whatever that homicide happened to be near. She's just concerned about this one and how dare the smoke shop not close their doors for, I don't know, the requisite time period in this area where shootings are just spiking out of control. It's ridiculous, it's absurd, and again, people will misdirect you off the core of the issue because they want to push their own pet projects. But those are just my thoughts. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. If you like the video, show them by leaving a like, subscribe for more content, follow me on all my social media, support me via the support links in the description of this video. This has been me talking about yet another double murder that could have been prevented had we had a sensible criminal justice system. Till next time.